I'm 4-1 meteorologist Kim Adams. First at 4, we've got temperatures this afternoon in the 60s, but by this weekend, highs only in the 30s. I'll have your forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Kim, first at four, it is a whole new world for Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Michigan Democrats. We're sorting through the state's apparent blue wave, and here's Kim DiGiulio. The Detroit Public Safety Foundation is honoring our first responders with a ceremony. Coming up, I'll give you a sneak peek at one of those heroes who risked his life in this home, all in the line of duty. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First and four, it is a whole new world of Michigan politics as Democrats create a blue wave in our state and the predicted red wave across the country fails to rise up. Results were coming in all night long, but we now know Governor Gretchen Whitmer has won a second term. The latest data shows her with a 10-point margin over Republican Tudor Dixon, who has conceded. Today, the governor tried to set this optimistic tone for the next four years. We will make Michigan a place where you can envision your future. A state where anyone, no matter who they are, where they come from, how much money they have in their pocket, who they love or how they identify, can thrive right here. Tudor Dixon conceded this morning, wishing Whitmer well, but also saying, quote, Michigan's future success rests not in elected officials or government, but all of us. It is incumbent upon all of us to help our children read, support law enforcement, and grow our economy. She also thanked all her supporters. Once again, Whitmer was joined by two other Democratic women seeking the top statewide offices. And once again, all three are on their way to second terms. Here are the results in the race for Secretary of State. Jocelyn Benson had to juggle running the election and running for office, but she easily fought off Republican Christina Caramo. So far, she has not conceded. Meantime, some polls showed Attorney General Dana Nessel would have had a closer race on her hands, but the latest results show she beat Republican challenger Matthew DiPerno by about eight percentage points. Today, he released a statement saying in part, quote, Although I may be conceding to Dana Nessel, today I refuse to concede that Michigan is a blue state. I will continue to fight like hell to restore Michigan to all it can be, and I look forward to continuing this journey with you all. Our posters said the election would have hinged on two waves just crashing, concerns about abortion versus concerns about inflation. So here in Michigan, it seems the battle over abortion played a role in fueling a Democratic sweep. Proposal 3 was put on the ballot after Roe versus Wade was overturned to add abortion rights to the state constitution. You can see voters supported that measure by a wide margin. Support for that proposal seems to have given state Democrats that kind of boost that they haven't seen in 40 years. They are on track to push Republicans aside and take control of the state House and state Senate. Local Force Christy McDonald is digging into that part of the story for us. The balance of power is changing in Lansing, and it is history in the making. The Democrats have a trifecta, the top offices as well as the majority in the State House and Senate. So what does that mean to issues you care about? What will the agenda be like in January? They will be able to, if they want to, push through just about any legislation that they want. I talk with political science professor Dave Dulio from Oakland University. He talks about the history and the impact. It's all coming up today on Local 4 News at 5. All right, appreciate it, Christy. And you can track all the results on your ballot at clickondetroit.com from the State House to Congress, local ballot measures, and referendums as well. Then, new at 5, for the first time, the city of Detroit won't have any African American representation in Congress. We're going to take a look into why that happened and what's next. New at 6, what's next after Prop 3 puts abortion rights into the state constitution? Pro-life activists are saying they're not done with the fight. It's all ahead on Local 4. We're also waiting to nail down the balance of power in the U.S. Capitol. At this hour, it looks like Republicans are closer to controlling the House, but Senate control is still up in the air. Now, depending on a few more results, that battle could take weeks, as NBC reports. Georgia is heading for a runoff between Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker. Voters would go to the polls again December 6th. We'll have an updated report on where things stand on Local 4 News at 5.30. President Joe Biden is set to speak at any moment now about the results, his reaction, and he'll probably talk about what comes next. We'll join that news conference when it gets started. But meantime, let's talk about the weather. Turning our attention to the forewarned forecast, you definitely want to soak up all this fall sunshine as long as possible. Command them standing by, and we're headed into a very comfortable direction 
for the next uh, day and a half, Friday afternoon and evening, that's when things really start to change. But it's beautiful out there right now. Great evening for a walk or whatever you want to do. 65 at City Airport, mid 60s in Ann Arbor, low 60s in Howell Pontiac and also in Mount Clemens. Widen the view. There's a lot of warmth out there. We'll get in on these 70s tomorrow. Look, it's 81 right now in St. Louis. But this is what we're watching back out to the west. See that cold air that is all about to move into Metro Detroit. There's a powerful cold front that will come through on Friday, drop our high temperatures back into the 40s and even the upper 30s for the weekend. But tomorrow, enjoy it. Sunshine and a high of 70 degrees. I'll have more on the forecast, plus the latest on what is about to become Hurricane Nicole affecting Florida. The outer bands are already there. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Kim. In other news today, the Detroit City Council has approved raises for the city's police department. The deal makes starting pay more competitive with other cities, increasing it from $43,000 to $53,000. The Detroit Police Union has been urging City Council to pass the pay raises, saying the department continues to lose good officers to other departments. Chief White is talking to reporters about the move right now. Sean Lay is there, and we'll have reaction on Local 4 News at 5. Many first responders will say they're just doing their job when they save someone's life. But each year, the Detroit Public Safety Foundation recognizes officers it believes have gone above and beyond the call of duty. Today, our Kim DiGiulio caught up with a firefighter who will be honored in a ceremony tomorrow and shares his brave story. It was back in January when this house behind me here on Detroit's west side was up in flames. But thanks to the quick action of Detroit firefighter Desmond Orr, the man who was stuck in that room is now alive. And now Desmond is getting honored for his heroism that day. Desmond Orr is still fairly new to the Detroit Fire Department with eight years under his belt. But at the age of 28, his jacket is starting to become heavy with all of these medals. He's the epitome of what Detroit Fire is about. We're about saving lives, uh, we're selfless. Chief James Harris says Desmond is a hero every day, but deserves to be honored for his heroic efforts at a fire he responded to last January, running upstairs in this house, which was bursting in flames, knowing there was somebody inside who needed to be saved. He was there on the bed unconscious, picked him up, started dragging him outside. Another firefighter came and assisted me rung them downstairs, and after that, um, I guess my EMT skills or medical skills started to pop in, so gave him some oxygen, started wrapping up his wounds. For saving a life, Desmond Orr will receive a Medal of Valor. He will also receive a Purple Heart Award for responding to a fire early last year in which the building collapsed while he was inside. I had a couple injuries, and um, it was about seven other guys. Uh, we all went to the hospital that day, a couple injuries, but everybody made it out alive. So I take that as being okay. And while Desmond appreciates the recognition, he says he was just doing his job both times. It always feels good being honored. You know, I'm very thankful that they are honoring me. Um, at the end of the day, I'm just doing my job. Um, and I'm just happy that the man that we did save, he survived. So at the end of the day, that's the reward right there. Chief Harris says that's the type of people who come to work for the Detroit Fire Department. Many more of these selfless firefighters will also be honored in the annual above and beyond ceremony. That's it. It's priceless. You give us a million dollars a year, it doesn't compare to saving a life. That award ceremony will take place tomorrow night at the Renaissance Center. Reporting in Detroit, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. All right, thank you very much, Kim. Fallen Officer Lauren Kortz will also be honored at the ceremony with a posthumous Purple Heart Award. His family will be there to accept the award on his behalf.